Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Welcome to Informed Immunity, a wellness evolution podcast in which we tackle the crucial topics that impact community health, respiratory infectious diseases, vaccine advocacy, and more. I'm Angel Tapia, your guide into the world of community health and a senior manager of Hispanic Community Outreach at the Global Healthy Living Foundation. Joining me is my colleague, Dr. Daniel Hernandez, Director of Medical Affairs and Hispanic Outreach. Together, we're here to break down complex health topics into easily understandable insights, answering the questions you've always had about vaccines and more. In this episode, we will be tackling the information around RSV and COVID-19 vaccines and why they are important. Thank you, Daniel, for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Angel. Daniel, could you dive into the significance of RSV vaccination for this demographic? Of course. So RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus, is often underestimated. The reason why is because usually it causes a mild cold-like symptom, but it can be quite severe for people with chronic conditions like asthma, heart disease, and COPD. Infants and older adults are more likely to develop severe RSV and actually need hospitalization. And that's the reason why we're talking about RSV vaccines today. So to emphasize the gravity of RSV in certain people, a study in the journal CHEST found that asthmatic individuals hospitalized due to RSV infection had higher mortality rates during hospitalization compared to those who weren't hospitalized for RSV. So basically, someone with asthma that had RSV and wasn't vaccinated was more likely to die than someone who was hospitalized that had RSV but didn't have asthma. So that's why it's so important to get vaccinated if you fall under this group. Thank you so much for highlighting the importance of RSV vaccination for people with chronic health conditions. This is a call to action for our listeners. If you have a chronic condition, don't overlook the RSV vaccine. Definitely, Angel. Vaccination is a vital tool in our health arsenal, especially for vulnerable populations. So if you fall into the categories that we mentioned, such as those that are 60 and over, or if you have infants at home, make sure that you speak to your pediatrician about this, or a chronic health condition like asthma, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, any type of these conditions, it's very important to speak to your physician about the RSV vaccine. Now let's shift our focus to some other crucial updates on the COVID-19 landscape, Daniel. Have there been some significant advances that you could shed some light on? Yeah, that's important. We've been hearing a lot about COVID-19. I think everybody has this COVID-19 vaccine exhaustion where you don't really want to hear about COVID-19 vaccines anymore. But it's important, right? Because it's still here. It's still part of our lives. And it is still something that we have to take seriously. So as of October 6, 2023, the CDC has updated its recommendations for COVID-19 vaccines. The most significant change is that within the 2023-24 years, they've updated the formula. So, for example, Novavax COVID-19 vaccine is now recommended for people ages 12 and older. This vaccine is available as a two-dose primary series for people who have not been previously vaccinated against COVID-19. So, for those that are 12 years and older, there is a vaccine now. And there's also a single booster dose for people who have been previously vaccinated with any original monovalent or bivalent COVID-19 vaccine, including those with Moderna, Novavax, Pfizer, or Janssen. In vaccines. And we've also heard from Dr. Mandy Cohen, the director of the CDC, who says we're in a strong position to fight COVID-19, as well as other circulating viruses like the flu and RSV. So that's reassuring. But let's not get complacent, right? Absolutely. While we're in a better position now, the fight isn't over. While the COVID-19 burden is currently lower, the number of hospitalizations and deaths is still notably high. This makes the updated vaccines even more critical. So let's talk specifics. What exactly are these updated guidelines for the different age groups? So for those aged five years and older, it doesn't matter if they've previously been vaccinated or not. 
a single dose of an updated mRNA COVID-19 vaccine is recommended at least two months after the last dose of any COVID-19 vaccine. For children aged six months through four years, there are various guidelines based on whether they have been previously vaccinated or not. So it's important to speak to your pediatrician about this. And what about for those who are immunocompromised? Immunocompromised individuals should complete a two-dose initial series with at least one dose of the 2023-2024 COVID-19 vaccine. So if you haven't received the vaccine during this year, 2023, it's important to speak to your physician about this. You may also receive one or more additional doses at least two months after the last dose. So it's fair to say that vaccines are still our best bet against COVID-19, and especially for those with chronic illnesses or weakened immune systems. Definitely. It's even recommended that these individuals get the new COVID vaccine as soon as it becomes available. Remember, if you have a chronic illness or a weakened immune system, it's actually more important for you to get vaccinated. It's not going to get you sicker or it's not going to affect you even more because you have these conditions. It's actually going to help you in the short term and the long term. Finally, with the end of public health emergencies, people should check their insurance coverage to ensure they're getting the vaccine within their network. For the uninsured, programs through the CDC are available. Spot on. As the landscape of COVID-19 continues to evolve, staying updated and protected is more important than ever. We understand that there are insurance companies that are starting to wane a bit on their coverage, but there is always a way to get them. Just speak to your physician about it. It's still very, very important to take this seriously. Absolutely, Daniel. Thank you for the comprehensive updates. And to our listeners, remember, vaccination is your best line of defense. So consult your healthcare provider for more personalized advice. So before we go, Daniel, as in each episode, why don't we offer our listeners a refresher on vaccines, a vaccine 101, so to speak. So let's first start with what are vaccines? That's a great idea. So vaccines teach your body how to produce antibodies against the virus you are being vaccinated for. This helps protect you from infection in the short term. They basically help train other immune cells known as B cells and T cells to recognize a virus and attack it. B cells produce antibodies that directly interact with the pathogen when it comes in and it neutralizes it. B and T cells have something like a memory that allows them to identify and they respond every time a given pathogen enters the body. Thank you so much for that detail. Can you also tell us uh, what role boosters play in our immunity? Sure. So we hear a lot about boosters, especially recently we've been hearing about COVID-19 boosters. But these are basically additional doses of any vaccine. And what this does is that it provokes an immune response and it further strengthens your immune system, both in the short term and the long term. That's why these doses are spaced apart to reactivate and strengthen the immune response. So when we talk about responses, can we also talk about why we might get side effects? Sure. So usually most people don't get side effects. And what happens is the reaction itself is a little tiny portion sometimes of the pathogen. And other times it's not even that. It's just the injection itself can cause redness and pain at the injection site. But it also can create, while your immune system is learning, it can create a bit of fatigue, fever, headache, nausea. And these are signs that the body is building protection against the virus. However, obviously, you should contact your doctor if your side effects feel severe or they don't go away after a few days. And everyone receiving a vaccine should be monitored on site. So wherever you get your vaccine should stay there for around 15 minutes afterward, just in case of an allergic reaction. They're very rare, but it's important to be there just in case. Thank you so much for this refresher, Daniel. I think it helps bring all of this information together and center it so that we can make sure we pay attention to our vaccine health. And for more information, listeners can visit the CDC or WHO websites for more evidence-based information. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, stay informed and stay healthy. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Informed Immunity, a Wellness Evolution podcast. We hope our discussions inspire meaningful conversations with your loved ones. For our Spanish-speaking listeners, episodes are also available in Espanol. 
If you have any questions or topic you'd like us to address, email us at podcasts at ghlf.org. And you can find all of GHLF's podcasts at ghlf.org forward slash listen. If you like this podcast, give us a rating and write a review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to us wherever you listen. It'll help more people like you find us. I'm Angel Tapia. And I'm Dr. Daniel Hernandez. Until next time, stay informed and stay safe. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network.